Hi everyone, and welcome to this teaching tutorial on how to set up your own WordPress website to support your online teaching. So to get started, you want to navigate to wordpress.com. We're going to be using um, the WordPress content management system for building a free teaching website. So click on that Start Your Website to get started. And it's going to give you a request for email, username, and password. Now, I've already got an account with WordPress. So if I scroll down, there's a login link here if you already have an account. If you don't, what you want to do is go ahead and put in your email and then pick a username and password for um, setting up your website. Um, one quick note for username, um, don't choose admin or the same name as your own name or the website itself because those will be the first things that a hacker will try when they're getting into your site. So you want to use a simple but um, useful username. So for example, I might use something like Prof Cruz, short for Professor Cruz, if I was going to create um, a new site. So go ahead and put in your email, username, and password there and it'll take you to basically the same screen as we're going to see here in just a second. Okay, so you've created your user on WordPress. Now you need to create the name of your class website. So I'm going to say for this class I'm teaching on religion and global issues that I want to use global religion as my title. And it does appear to be available. It didn't give me any error message. And if you look right here, you'll see it's telling me there's a number of different sort of alternate or similar um, options here that I can use. But it's notice it's also trying to sell me um, these different um, options. I don't really want any of these. What I would like to use is just global religion. But it doesn't seem like it's letting me do that. So I need to add, let's say, something a little bit more to it. And now I see globalreligion101.wordpress.com um, is available. So what you're looking for is here is you want to see this green free option. So the name here will be whatever you want it to be, and then .wordpress.com. So you just want to check and make sure if you're not happy with that, you can try some different options. Uh, but make sure you check the spelling on what you want. So for example, maybe I want global religions, plural. Same thing. So someone must already have that version. So maybe I might say teaching global religions. Okay, so I can see teachingglobalreligions.wordpress.com is available. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and go here. Now immediately WordPress is going to ask you if you want to upgrade to a paid service plan. Um, for our purposes, we're creating a free site. So you just want to go right here where it says or start with a free site and click that. And then it'll start putting together your site on the back end. And then what you see here is the home landing screen for WordPress for all your different sites that you might manage. And it's now told me that I've created a site and you see it's got a number of steps that it wants me to walk through to get my site up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and click get started here. So the first thing I need to do is give my site a name and a little bit of information. So I'm going to click name your site. And then it's going to ask me for the site title and a tagline. So I'm going to call this Teaching Global Religions. And again, you can change these titles later if you need to, so um, don't worry if you decide you want to make some uh, adjustments here. And then for a tagline, I might say a class about global religions. So I'm just going to close this so it's out of my way so I can see the screen here more clearly. And it's just reminding me as I'm going along to make sure you click Save Settings so that these changes are saved. Now, it gives me the option to add a site icon, and that's basically what you see, the little graphic in the corner of a tab on a browser. We're not going to worry about that right now. If you have one already ready, then you can click on Change, and then Browse to wherever that is saved, and you can add that there. Our site address is fine. We don't need to do any kind of a custom address. 
and we're not using a redirect or buying our own domains. So for the purposes of here, nothing needs to be changed. The language and time zone settings will generally default to whatever your computer settings are, but just make sure that the language and the time zone match um, your needs um, for wherever you're based. Okay, so I didn't need to make any other changes besides those first two. So I'm gonna click, okay, return to my homepage. So it showed me that is done. Now it's asking me to create a site menu. Now, the last bit of the steps here I think are actually easier to do from within your own um, WordPress page rather than through this WordPress.com administration. So you see here on the left, this is kind of your key or core navigation um, for your website. So you'll see the name of your class here. And if you have multiple websites, when you go under manage, you'll be able to manage um, the different domains that you have hosted. But what we're looking for here is at the bottom where it says WP Admin. So if you click on that, it should open up our newly created page from within the WordPress software. And what you can see here is the administrative back end of what our website's going to look like. So we want to be able to see what our site looks like currently. So we're, if you go back to this page here where it says site title, if we click on this, it will open up a preview of what our page looks like right now. So this is what, once we publish our website, this is what the public will see. So we've got our title and our subtitle here, a couple pages that were auto-generated by WordPress, a sort of a landing graphic with a little bit of text and a button, three sample blog posts that were already pre-populated, and an option to allow someone to subscribe to an email newsletter, and then a generic footer that right now doesn't have any content in it. So you can use the menu here, for example, the page posts and others to make edits to your site. But I found that going to the dashboard, so again, this when you click this WP admin link, it'll open up um, the administrative window just within your WordPress site. And I find this is much easier to actually work with your site. So the first thing we want to do is think about our pages. So you'll notice if you go back quickly here that if we click on the home button, it's taking us to this screen. So they're using a home page as the default landing page for their website. So if we go down here to our pages link, we can view all the different pages and we see right now there's four pages and it's telling me that this home page is set to the front page. Now this is something that can vary by different themes you're using, but in this default setup that WordPress gives you, they've created this home page that acts as your front page. So we want to click um, edit here and that will bring up the ability to edit the page that users see when they first come to your site. Now there's a couple different options for how you can set up your home page, um, but just going with the default setting for now for the ease of use, you'll see that you've got a couple different sections of text as well as a button and then a background image. So by clicking in any of these text, we can go ahead and put in our own custom text. So I might say religion and global issues, so whatever perhaps your class title is. And then you could put in whatever kind of extra text you want here. Perhaps this is information from your class syllabus about um, short description of the class or a listing from an online course in the register that students might see. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to put in a quick little note here. religion and global issues at University X. And then this button here is something where if you don't want it, all you have to do by clicking on any of these, what they call blocks, it's, it's think of it as a placeholder for content. You have some abilities to change options, or if you click on the little three dots, um, you get an option where you can um, go in and remove this block if you don't want it. So for now, I'm going to remove this block because I don't have a need for a button on that first kind of landing spot here. And then you'll see I've got three blogs. 
So I want to decide if I want to keep these or delete them or go in and edit them. But you'll see when I clicked on this box, it brought up a couple different style options. So this is the default. I can change between a few different options here if I want. I'm just going to leave it at the default image uh, for now. But obviously these are things if I want to change um, the image itself, I can also grab here and drag and make this um, image within a certain degree um, bigger or smaller. So if I think about when students first come to my page, what do I want them to see? So I want them to know the class name and then a brief blurb about the class. And then maybe I want to make sure that they look at the syllabus. So I'm going to click on this little plus where it says add block. You can also find the same option up here in the top menu. So either one of those places, if you click here, it'll give you that same ability to add a block. And then it gives you a drop down menu of different kinds of blocks. So there's lots of different types of organizational content, um, different ways to bring in text, different ways to bring in types of media, uh, different sort of design elements. So maybe if I wanted to add a button back in, or if I want to add spacers or um, any kind of kind of custom content. And then widgets, which again are kind of placeholders for different kinds of content you can see for blog posts or a carousel of sliding posts or a calendar or other sort of custom, customizable content. Um, a number of embed options, so if I wanted to, for example, bring in a Twitter feed or YouTube playlists or videos, um, any of these uh, many different options exist. As you can see as you scroll through, there's a whole bunch of different types of contents you can bring in here. So just for this uh, simple example here, what I want to bring in is just another set of text. So I'm just going to click on the paragraph here. And that's given me a box right here. And I'm going to say, be sure to read the class syllabus for the first day of class. Now, I need to do two things. One, I want this to be higher up on my page. Right now it's near the bottom. So I can either use that arrow to move it up or I can grab and drag like this. So I want it to basically be right uh, between this text and this. So you can see it didn't quite go where I wanted it to go yet. So right there is where I would like it to be. And maybe I want to align that text in the center. And then I want students to be able to download the syllabus. So again, clicking the plus icon there or the plus icon right here, I can add a block. And now I want a PDF file or a Word file to be added. So I'm going to type in file. You can also do browse. And if you just go down under media here, you'll find the file option. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to ask me to either upload a file from my computer or add one from the media library. So I'm going to upload and then I want to go to my desktop and I'm going to add this sample class syllabus. Okay, so now it's added this and a link to download that file. And I can change this if I want. So let's say class syllabus Word doc. And perhaps I want this to have some no, everything I think looks okay there. I don't need to make any other um, changes to this at the moment. So I've now got this download option along with that bit of text. So now when students um, come to the class, they'll be able to download um, that link. And again, you can see anytime you click on any of these blocks, you'll get additional options on the side menu here that allow you to do some additional customizations. I'm not going to worry too much about those for now. You're welcome to play around with those. Um, every content block will have the same kind of options. So on our home page right now, we'll have a, a picture, the title, and a little bit of text. And I've just added this bit of text here. 
with the ability to download the class syllabus. And then we've got these three um, sample blogs that are being pulled from existing posts. So let's assume that I'm okay with these three posts being here, but I want to change the content. Okay, so I also don't really want to have a email subscription box here on the page since my class is going to be just my own students. I'm not really worrying about other people. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that block for now. Again, we can always add more content back in here if we need it. So I've got these three blogs and a note about the class syllabus. So as I'm making changes, what I want to do is if I look up here, you'll see it says update, launch, switch to draft, and preview. I'm going to click update and this is basically going to save the changes that I've made so that once I'm ready to go ahead and launch or publish the state publicly um, all of these changes that I've been making are being incorporated. So you can see it has a little note says page updated and gives me the option to view the page if I'd like to. You can also do the same thing by clicking the preview button here. So I'm going to click preview a new tab and it'll show me what the site will look like once I publish it live. So you can see now I've got this note about the syllabus and a link. So if my students click that, they can download the Word file. Now I've got these three posts here that obviously I don't want them to have the text that are here. I want to make some changes. So how do I go about doing that? So again, if you go back to the screen we were looking at here when we were making changes, you click on the little WordPress icon it will bring up um, our menu here, which allows me to then view all the pages. So I can see there's a couple existing pages in the page that I was just working on. So I'm going to go back to all pages. And again, I can see that there are four pages here, the home that I've been working on, these three others. But what I want to actually do is edit a post. So those three posts, again, that we saw right here, each of these is an individual blog post. So by going to the post page, in my administrative menu, I can see those three posts and I can make changes to those. So let's say I want to make an edit to this first one. So I'm going to click here on edit. So maybe I do want introduce yourself to be an example post for my students. So when they first join the class, one of the things that everyone should do is introduce themselves to the class. So Obviously, you'll want to customize this text to your own class or your own university, um, but this gives you kind of a, a good example idea of something you might include for one of your posts. So I'm actually happy with that. So I'm not going to make any changes to this specific post. But if I want to, again, all I have to do is type in right there and it will make those changes to the post. So if we click back here again, bring that side menu up, I'm going to go back to all posts. Uh, yes, I don't, I'm going to tell it it's fine to leave. I don't want to accept the changes I just made to the word introduction. So I'm going to pick um, one of these other posts. Let's say this one, the introduce, introduce yourself, second one. And this one I want to be about the syllabus. Let's say I'm going to call this syllabus reminder. And I'm just going to select all the text here and briefly delete that since I don't need um, any of this text. So I'm going to put a brief reminder for all of my students that they need to review the syllabus in week one and complete the week one assignment. And I'm going to note that more details about assignment number one can be found on the assignments page of this website. Now, I don't have an assignments page yet, so I'll need to keep in mind that if I want students to be able to go to this page, then I need to um, also create that page. But for now, I'm going to leave that um, as it is. I'm going to click Update so it saves these changes. 
And again, as I mentioned before, you see the post update, this little note in view post. So if we click that, it'll show us, okay, so now this post now has the updated information I just gave it. In all these posts, you'll see this basic information about the author, the publication date, any categories that it was uh, included with, and then if there were tags added, those would also show up here. So again, if I click back here on my home, you can see now that this second um, post that I just changed now appears here. And there's a third post that I can either make additional changes to like I just did, or I can delete depending on, um, there's really no good or best way to do it. Some people prefer to just delete all the posts and start fresh. Others will just take an existing post like this and make all the changes to it. So really there's no uh, right or wrong answer to that question. Um, but just remember that before you make your site live, you'll want to either delete or customize these first three posts that are provided in WordPress. Now, the other main thing here we see, this is our main menu. We've got a blog page, which right now is empty, an about page, and a contact page. So if we scroll down the blog page, you'll see all of the posts that have been made so far are just organized here by sequential date. So this page can be changed so that your posts show up on any individual page, but by default, WordPress uses the blog page as the sort of default landing place for all new posts. So this can be something where every time your students post, they could check and see all the other posts. Similarly, the about, you can see the default about page here that WordPress has provided. And I'm gonna change this page because I want this to basically be my faculty page. So if you look right down here, you'll see it says edit. So I'm gonna click on the edit button and make this a little bit more personalized for me rather than for someone else. So I'm gonna put a little note there, and then I might say a bit about myself. And I might also Put information here again you could put whatever you want here uh, you might include your office hours you might include uh, office phone number again all of this is information that you can customize however you want. This photo here, if you click on this, just like all the other areas, you can go in and replace this image with a new image. You can take away the picture completely. Again, you can do some different um, style changes to the size and type of image. So maybe I'm gonna decide that I wanna replace this. Now you've got your media library, which is where WordPress stores all of your photo and media content that you upload, things that you add as attachments, essentially. Google Photos, Pexel Free Photos as other places that you can connect for media. I'm gonna click Upload because I want to select something on my computer. So I'm gonna go here to my pictures and let's say for today's purposes that I am Emma Goldman so that is going to be my new profile picture, and I'm just going to add the caption there that says Professor Cruz. Okay, so if I'm happy with those changes again, like before, you want to click that Update button again, and that will save and incorporate um, all of these changes you've just made. And then again, if we click View Page, we can see that now this has basic information here. Now, by default, as I mentioned before, WordPress gives you both an about and a contact page. For my purposes as a teacher, I don't really need a separate contact page if I'm already including that um, on my about page. So you can do this either from your main WordPress.com menu, which is what we're looking at now, or from these uh, individual pages within your 
uh, website itself. So again, if we click on my sites and go back to your WP admin. So I'm going to go to my pages menu here and I'm going to go down to the contact and I'm going to go trash and delete that page. And so I'm not really going to be using that for anything. I don't really need that, but I do want to create one new page here. So if I look up above where it says pages, there's a drop down to add a new page and then you can select between the types of editors. So I'm going to add a new page and I'm going to call this page assignments. Since I made a mention to the assignments page, I'm just going to go with a blank layout for now. Okay, so I'm going to call this assignments. Here you can find your weekly class assignments. And then you can imagine putting each of your assignments with some information um, here. And then I want to publish this page. So whenever you create a new page, it's going to ask you first if you're ready to publish, so it'll ask you to double check. And then it's going to ask you for the visibility of your site. So do you want this page to be a public page? a private page that only you can see in as administrator or editor, or a password protected page. For our purposes, we're gonna keep that at the public setting since that's all um, we want our site to be. But if you wanted your entire class to be a private class where only students could access it, you could set this to password protected and then provide your students with that password to access individual pages and or even your entire site. And then the publish option here gives you the ability to either publish immediately or to schedule your, po your post in advance. For my purposes, I want to publish this um, immediately, so I'm not gonna make any changes here. And then I'm going to go up to publish. Okay, so it's showing me that I've got a new page created here and I can either view that page or copy link. I'm gonna copy this link because I'm gonna need this in just a second. Now, if you click on the little X here, it'll um, close that window out and give you the ability to go back here to this menu. So what I wanna do is go back um, where it says all pages back to this menu. And I wanna go back to my posts. So if you'll remember here, the syllabus reminder page we mentioned the assignments, but we didn't actually provide any information about how to find that. But now we've created an assignments page. So what we can do is in that last sentence there, where it says assignments can be found on the assignments page, I'm gonna select that and then click on the link icon here. And then I know my page is called assignments, but if I had forgotten what the exact address was, um, if you start typing in the letters from a post or a page, it will pull those up and it will show you a page or a post. So I want this assignments page, so I'm gonna click on that. So now that link will take students or whoever's on this page to the assignments page that I just created. So I'm gonna click, again, update there in the menu. And then I wanna view that post briefly so I can see how that change looks. So now if I'm reading this post and I click on the assignments page and I click that, okay, so now I'm being taken to the assignments page of this website. So that's good, but how are students going to find this? So students need a way to get to this assignments page. So when you um, look down the bottom, you'll see that there's also uh, a number of menu, app, menu options here as well. So I want to click on the Customize link here, which will bring us back to the WP administrative menu. And specifically, I want to go to where it says menus here in the left and click on that and it'll drop down and give me some different options. So for our purposes, we're worried about the primary menu. That's this menu you can see right here at the top. So if we click on that, It'll show me that I've got a couple pages showing one page here 
that says invalid. So that's the contact page that I deleted. So by clicking that little arrow, I can see more information about it. And actually what I can say is, okay, I want to remove that page because it's no longer something that I need in my menu. But I do want this assignments page to be added. So I'm going to click here on add item. And then I have a display of the pages that exist currently. I can click on any of these to view individual post categories, tags, as well as at the top here, custom links. So for our purposes, I want to add this assignments page to that main menu. So I'm going to click on that. So you'll see now assignments has been added to this list of class options. And then I want to click on save changes here at the top so that it incorporates that change I've just made. And you can see home, blog, about, and assignments. So now assignments is also part of these menu from all of my different pages. So it doesn't matter what page you're on, you'll always be able to see that assignments option in the top. So by clicking this little black arrow here at the top of the side menus, it allow you to go back one menu from where you were at before. So this is kind of anytime you're in what's called the customizer, which is what we're looking at right now. So it says, you can see here, you are customizing the name of our class. This will give you the ability to go back and change again, the class title and subtitles. So this information you have here, and you can also do that by clicking on the little pencil icon here at the top. And you can see also here for your footer at the bottom, you can click there or you can make changes here. Both of those will take you to um, that same place. So again, if, if for example, you wanted to add a site icon, but you didn't in that first setup phase, here you could go to select site icon and select a file by uploading it. Or for example, if you already had images in your media library, you could select them from your media library. So I'm not going to add one now, but just as a reminder, this is where um, your site identity, you can change both that title, subtitle, and add the icons. The colors and background will allow you to change the basic color schemes. For example, things like the hyperlink text, the background color on these blogs. So different background colors will bring up secondary color schemes. So depending on what kind of palettes you want, you might choose. So you see the red now changes these links to red, green changes them to green. Now this one actually gives me a dark background with white text. So again, as you see, as you go through these different palettes, it will give you different color options. If you're happy with the default, again, you can just click back on default and it'll reset to those settings. Um, I didn't technically make any changes so I don't have to hit save changes, but I will just um, for the sake of the practice here. Again, we looked at that menu already for creating menus. So just as a reminder, you can create a number of different menus and both for mobile as well as desktop settings. Um, but for our purposes, really the primary menu is the only one we really need to worry about. And you can tell it where that primary menu will show up. So we can have the menu also show up in the footer if we wanted. So for example, you would always have that same menu down here at the bottom. You can also have it show up in a social links menu if you're using that. For example, if you have a sidebar on your website. For our purposes, again, we're just worrying about the primary menu here, so we don't really need to make any additional changes. The content options here gives you the ability to add a featured image on pages. We're not really so worried about that for getting our site up and running. Um, but I do want to briefly touch on the widget. So clicking on widgets will give you the ability to add a widget to your website. And with the default theme we're using, it will always put the widget in the footer. So for example, if we choose um, calendar, if we wanted to add a calendar to our website. So you can see now there's a calendar that's been added by WordPress here into the footer of our website. And again, you can give this a title if you want, which will then show up here. Um, it's not necessary to, it's entirely up to you. Once you're happy with that, then all you have to do is click done and you've got a widget. Again, you can add as many different widgets as you want. And then by clicking on individual widget, you can make changes. In this case, I don't really want that widget there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. 
and save that change so it takes it back off. But if you want to add, for example, a section of videos or other content there at the bottom, um, you can easily do that through this widgets menu. Now the home page settings, I mentioned this briefly uh, before when we were looking at the home page that we edited. So by default, WordPress sets this theme to use a static page for your home page display. And that's what we're looking at right here. This is a static page that's drawing from our home page. So these diff any of these pages could be set to be our home page. So for example, if we wanted our blog to be our landing page when students first came to the website, we could set that so that when you came to the website, you just saw all of the most recent posts. You can also create your own custom home page by just clicking on add new page. So it's completely up to you what you use as your home page. It can be simply your latest posts, which will just have nothing except for all of your posts, one after the other. But for this demonstration, we're gonna use the default static page and we're gonna keep it at home, which is that home page that we were looking at before. Again, as I mentioned, the post page, so you can set a custom page that all of your default posts will go to. WordPress generally defaults it to the blog page, but you can set that to other things if you want, or you can just leave it unselected the way it is here by default. And again, you can also change some of these options in terms of showing or hiding um, headers or footers on your class. So if I didn't want the homepage title, I can simply click on or off there to show it. Again, I could hide the site header and just start with the image, or I can have the class title and the menus here. So again, we didn't change anything, but because we went back and forth a couple times, it thinks we made some changes. So those are the kind of the key different parts of the menu when you're in Customizer to make changes to kind of the visual appearance and some of the other settings of your website. And again, you can see our main homepage here, our three blog posts, right now our empty footer. We've got the blog posts page here, the about page, and the assignments page. Now, any other new pages you create, you'll want to remember to add these to um, the primary menu if you're gonna be using those as menus. Um, if they're not primary menus, but they're submenus, for example, you might have um, assignments and you could create a page for just week one assignments or just week two assignments, et cetera. But now we have a working website that we've created a custom page. We've changed our about page. We've added a little bit of information to our home page. So this is our custom home page. We made a change to one blog post here, and we could easily make a post to the second, uh, change to the second blog post here. But let's say for our purposes, we want to just get rid of um, this other blog post. So again, you'll notice when we scroll to the top, this drop down menu appears here at the bottom again. So I'm gonna click on edit. This will allow me to edit the home page. Now you'll see here it's telling me there's an autosave of this post that's more recent. Um, I haven't really made any changes to the home page, so I can just click the X to close this. But if you weren't sure if you've been working on a page and you went away for a while and came back to it and had forgotten to change the save your changes, you can always click the view the autosave here, and it'll show you kind of the timestamp of different changes and you can view what's different between each version of those um, changes. And you can also click the split view so you can view them side by side. But like I said, we haven't made any major changes that I need to worry about. So I'm gonna click that X here. I'm gonna click that once more just to close um, that side menu so I can see the screen better. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's say I wanna add one um, other possible section somewhere in here. So I'm going to click and let's go to um, media. I want to add something from YouTube. So we go down 
to embeds here, and then you see YouTube. So I want to embed a URL here. Okay, so I'm going to copy my URL and then paste it into here for a video that I want to add to my site that will help my students figure out how to create a blog post. So I'm going to post that in there. Okay, so how to write a blog post in WordPress, step by step. So I want that to show up above the blog post here. So again, I'm going to click the little arrow and bring it up so it's right below this download the syllabus option here. Now, you can see how this seems a little bit clustered here. So what I'm going to do is click again on add block and I'm going to go down a little bit to where the design option is and I want to add a spacer here that will give me a little bit of space between the different blocks. So that looks probably a good amount of space. I just need to move this up in between. Okay. Now obviously you can adjust how much space is there by clicking on that little arrow. That looks like a good amount of space here. So again, I'm going to click the update button so I can update that. And maybe I want to add one um, note after this for my students. So I'm going to click the paragraph and I'm going to say, please watch the short video on how to create your first class post on uh, WordPress. And I want that to be center aligned. Okay, so again, click on the update button there. So if I go to preview, I can see now that my home page got my title and a little subtitle tag. I've got a reminder to read the class syllabus with a link to download that. I've got a short video that I can ask students to watch for creating a post. And then I've got a couple introductory posts. One, asking students to introduce themselves with a sample post. Another with a reminder about reading the syllabus. And then this third post, which was a pre-created one by WordPress that I might change. Perhaps I might make this into something about uh, the assignment one announcement or a reminder about assignment one, since I've referenced that here in the syllabus reminder. So I'm going to go ahead and close that preview screen. So click back here on my black editor to go back to our main page here. So again, I want to jump back into my WP admin. And I can see now the changes that I've made here if I uh, refresh this site. I've got that syllabus, I've got the videos. So all this looks good so far. You'll notice here it says your site hasn't been launched yet. Only you can see it until it's launched. So by clicking launch site here, I'll tell it to basically uh, make my site public. So you, that's kind of the last step you want to do before you're ready to uh, make your whole website go live. So I, I may not quite be ready to do that yet. You'll see here as I've been going through and making changes, it's been telling me that I've completed each of these different steps. So right now, just launching my site and getting the WordPress app are the only two things left to do right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click Launch Site. I'm not gonna worry about getting my WordPress app yet. Now, if I'm not ready to make changes, but I feel like uh, there's still some things about the site that I wanna work on more, maybe I wanna add some more pages to my menu, um, whatever it might be, um, the changes that I wanna make you know, until I'm happy with the version of this kind of private site, you don't need to publish um, your site. If you do, you can always change it back to private or unpublished until you're ready to go. Um, but for our purposes here, it's, I find it's best to make all the changes you want first and then to launch your site um, once you feel like you have all the content you want. So, if, for example, if I want to change that other post, 
I might click here and edit that post and say um, assignment one. And then again, I'm going to put in some new text here. So I'm going to say your first class. Assignment is to post your introduction blog post on our class website and to review the class syllabus. And then I'm going to add a final note, which is you can find all the details about assignment number one on the assignments page of this website. So I'm going to highlight the assignments page. And again, like we did before, I want to click on the little link icon. And I want this to go to the assignments page. So make sure you're going to the page and not a post here. That looks good, and then I'm going to update that blog post. Okay, so I'm going to view that post. That looks fine for now. Again, you can always go back and change these um, as you need. So now if I go back to the home, we can see I've got the introduce yourself example post, the syllabus reminder, and the assignment number one post. So if I'm happy with how all of this looks now, then I can click here where it says launch site and it will start taking me to this final option. So it's basically taking me step one to four. So again, we're gonna keep the free domain we have so we don't need to do a purchase. Again, we're using a free site once more, I don't want to buy a private or paid domain, so no thanks. I'll stick with what I've got. And hooray, my site is now being made publicly available. So it's telling me now that I've launched my site. And it's giving me some more information about the site. Um, again, resources for where to find more media and content. So I'm going to click right here where it says visit site so I can see um, what this site looks like. So you can see teachingglobalreligions.wordpress.com. I've got those pages I created from the menu. I can download and view this Word doc. I can watch this video on creating a WordPress post. I can read these posts. And there's nothing, as I said before, here in our footer, but if we had other content here, that would also be showing up. So again, those are the basic steps to creating your own WordPress site to use for a class. And we'll have other future videos for how to go about um, creating users, adding your students to the class, and doing other um, kind of nuts and bolts parts of using a WordPress website for university teaching. Okay, I hope this introduction was useful, and thank you very much.